Uh, hi everyone, I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about something that was highly requested and that is what did I do to study for the MCAT. As I discussed in a previous video, I scored within the 98th percentile of the MCAT and I've been getting a lot of messages and a lot of comments asking um, to give tips and advice for students. I will put all the links to the resources that I used in the description box below, so please make sure to check it out. And here we go. First things first, when did I take my MCAT? I took my MCAT the summer after my sophomore year, and I did that because I wanted to apply to medical school straight out of college. The medical school application cycle, for people who want to attend medical school right after college, they will submit their application, usually the summer after their junior year, and then during their senior year, they get to go to interviews and see different schools, different states, all that stuff, and then they matriculate to medical school right after. So that means they must usually take their MCAT before then. I decided to take mine the summer after my sophomore year because I did not want to take it during my junior year. I didn't want to have to balance taking classes while studying for this test, and so that's personally why I chose that test date. For anyone watching this, I would advise you to think about when you want to apply to medical school and then work backwards to find the ideal test date for you. The second thing I got asked a lot was how long did I study for? So I studied for two and a half months. During the summer of my sophomore year, I actually had a job orientation, I think at the end of summer, and so that was back at school. So I wanted to take my test right before I had to go back to school for that orientation. So because of that, I only had two and a half months. And you know, I think that was a good time frame for me, but it's really all dependent on your individual study style. Some people take six months, some people only take two months. It's really up to you. Uh, the next question I got was, what did I use to study for the MCAT? So there are lots of uh, test prep companies out there, the Princeton Review, the Berkeley Review, Exam Crackers, I think Altius is one of them, and Kaplan. So I cannot speak to most of those resources because the one that I used is Kaplan. I bought the Kaplan books and that worked really well for me. That kind of goes into the next question I was asked a lot, which is, did I self-study or did I use a test prep course? So I self-studied, which means that I created my own study schedule and I followed it. Some people do buy those test prep courses, and I would advise people to buy them, I think, if they really need structure uh, to follow and if they like studying in a classroom setting and going to classes. I personally felt like I could uh, do fine without it, so that's just why I chose to self-study. So now I'm going to go into some tips regarding the MCAT. First tip is to know what you're in for. The MCAT is not an easy test uh, and it's, you know, it's a seven hour test where you're expected to think very critically about physics, biochem, ochem, English, psychology, sociology, and to analyze passages within time constraint. It's very difficult and I think that it's important to be prepared mentally when going into studying for this exam. Hopefully your goal is to only take it once. It is, I think, over $300. And it takes up pretty much your entire day. So hopefully you only need to take it once so it saves you time and money. But I would just advise you to be prepared for what's to come. It's, it, is going to take up, it is going to take sacrifice and discipline. It's going to be a lot of hard work. But if you're ready for it, then you'll do well. Uh, one thing I would say is I would advise you to take the MCAT after you take a biochemistry course in college. So for UC Riverside students, that course is called Biochem 100. That course helped me immensely because it really laid the foundation for so many essential topics for the MCAT. I also already finished the organic chemistry series. So I would advise students to take at least the biochemistry course, an intro course, and the organic chemistry series before taking the MCAT, just because I think it's easier to understand in a classroom setting rather than teaching yourself those concepts. I will say that I did not take the last course of physics, and I did not take a psychs course and you know an in-depth sociology course in college before taking the MCAT. So I had to teach myself pretty much the last part of physics and teach myself the psych and social part, which I think was doable, uh, but I would definitely, definitely advise students to take biochem first and the ochem series. The second tip I have is to know how to motivate yourself. So this test is very stressful, as I said earlier, and you really 
um, have to keep your morale up and high. And so what I did is I got a regular piece of printer paper and I just wrote on it all the famous quotes that I really like that were motiv motivating and inspirational. I put down names of people who I look up to and I just posted that on the wall above my desk so I could see it every day. I also put the score that I wanted and I set goals for myself and I actually got the same exact score that I wanted. So uh, just make sure to motivate yourself in any way that will work for you and keep yourself disciplined during this time. Another thing uh, to go along with that is, of course, it's important to take study breaks and to you know get some fresh air, exercise, to de-stress, but when you're studying, make sure that it's quality time spent studying. One thing that helps me is I put my phone away and I made sure not to be distracted by social media, things like that, so just find a way to keep yourself disciplined. Next tip that I have is to take notes the way that you want. So just because it's the MCAT, I don't think you should change up your note-taking style. I think that you should take notes the way that you've always taken notes because you know what works best for you. So some people really like using iPad um, and the fancy pen with it, or they like typing up their notes. But I'm super old-fashioned in the way that I love handwritten notes. I took notes with a journal and a pen, and I did it the old-fashioned way. When I made flashcards, I used real tangible flashcards, but I know some people like using Quizlet or Anki, which is another service online for flashcards. So whatever works for you, I advise you to stick with it because you know yourself best. The next tip that I have is to take practice tests. I think practice tests are the holy grail in terms of studying for the MCAT. And the MCAT is hard because it not only tests content and if you understand a concept or a vocabulary term, but it's hard because you're expected to analyze passages about scientific experiments, about works of literature, and you're expected to think critically and learn how to apply that content to answer questions. So I think it's important to understand how the double AMC writes their questions and writes their passages. You have to be familiar with the test with the way the test is written and with the test format. And so I advise you uh, to buy the double AMC practice test bundle, no matter what test prep service you are using, whether it's Kaplan, Princeton, whatever, buy the double AMC practice test bundle. These are the people who are administering the MCAT, so it's best to learn what the MCAT questions are really like from the people who made it. And of course, this is linked in the description box below. The next tip that I have is to simulate test conditions. I think this is understated a lot, but the MCAT is hard on your brain because you're expected to answer all these questions on all these different topics in a time constraint. But it's also difficult because you're expected to sit upright for seven hours staring at a computer screen. And whenever you're studying or taking a practice test at home, make sure to simulate test conditions so you are not encountering anything unexpected on the actual test day. I would advise you to sit upright in a chair at a desk when you're studying. I would advise you to close the door to your room or go to the library to have a quiet space. I would even advise people to eat the same thing for breakfast every day so their body gets used to it and you don't get a stomach ache on the day of your test. I think it's also important to plan ahead so figure out where your test center is and then work backwards to see how much time it takes you to drive to your test center and uh, figure out what time you should wake up. My test was at 8 a.m. I was not a morning person, so I just conditioned my body to wake up early and to think critically in the morning. Next um, tip I have is keep track of why you missed questions. So when I took missed questions, I realized it was one of three things. Number one was that I didn't know my content, meaning I didn't remember what an enzyme did, I didn't remember a certain step in a biochemical pathway, and that's something I knew I needed to refresh my memory on. The second reason why I would miss a question is because I just read the passage way too quickly. I was probably worried about the time, I skimmed the passage, and I missed a certain part of the passage that would have helped me answer the question correctly. The next reason why I missed a question is that I misunderstood the question, and this is why it's so important to learn from the double AMC directly. Oftentimes, you might read a question, you might pick an answer based on your understanding, but your understanding was incorrect. And so it's important to get used to the way the double AMC words questions and the way that they write things so you're familiar with um, their language. 
Uh, the next tip I have is to use Khan Academy's free resources. So of course I think most people know what Khan Academy is, but Khan Academy actually has a lot of videos aimed specifically for the MCAT, and they also have lots and lots of different questions that are in the MCAT style. And I would advise you to take advantage of these free resources, uh, no matter what test prep company you are using. I will say their psychology and sociology videos, along with their physics videos, are really informative and they helped me so much, so I definitely, definitely recommend that. Those are all the tips that I have and I really wish you all the best of luck. The cat is so so stressful and so challenging but if you put your all into it and you end up getting the score and within your target range it's it's a wonderful feeling knowing that you work so hard for it. Just know that it takes sacrifice, it takes discipline but it will be worth it in the end and just keep on pushing and you'll do great. So again if you have any more questions about my experience um, or want to message me directly, uh, please do so, uh, and I'll see you at the next video. <laughs> Bye!